Hello and welcome back to another video. Yesterday we looked at, this is called calorimetry, which is you measure the temperature change of a certain solution, normally water. And by the, measuring out the temperature change, you're working out how much energy has been put in or released from the system. In this question, we had some hexane, which is a gas, a hydrocarbon that's being burnt. And it's burning and it's heating up our water. We saw our water increase from 20 degrees to 36 degrees, so it's increased in energy. And we can work out the amount of energy with our equation Q equals mc delta t. Our m is 400 grams. Our c is our specific heat capacity, 4.18, as it always is for water. And our temperature change is just 36.7 minus 20.5, the change in temperature. And by using that and working out the number of moles of hexane, we can work out this number, which a lot of you did in the Google Classroom post, which is fantastic. There's a second part to this question, which I didn't go into, and that was why I explain why this value you obtained was less than the theoretical value. And this is called the accuracy of this technique. There's a couple reasons why it's not so accurate, but the main one is heat. This is not a perfect system. Heat is going to escape. Heat can escape by the, when you burn the hexane, you're not just heating up the water. The energy is going into heating up the tripod or heating up the glass or just escaping into the air. These are all ways that heat could escape and not go into heating up the water, which is what we're measuring. Cool. So that was just something about the accuracy of this technique. The next thing we're going to move on to is something called the standard enthalpy of formation. This is given by an F. This F means formation. What this means is one mole of a substance formed from its constituent elements. A bit confusing, but we're going to show you an example and it's going to make perfect sense. Here we have propane, C3H8, propane. And we're trying to write out an equation to show the standard enthalpy of formation of propane. When we form propane, what we're going to do is we're going to make it from its base elements. Its base elements in this case is carbon and hydrogen. Carbon is found in nature as a solid, carbon solid, and we have three of them. So we have three lots of carbon solid. We also have hydrogen in it. Hydrogen is found in nature as H2. You never find hydrogen just by itself. It's always paired up as hydrogen gas. So you have H2 and four lots of H2. These are going to combine and they're going to release a certain amount of energy when they combine to make propane. And this is propane gas. And this energy that it released, we can work it out as the standard enthalpy of formation. So copy, copy down these notes into your books, including the example, and then we can move on. We're going to try these ones in our Google Classroom post. A few of them like them, but we can try these as a as a class. So C4, CH4, we have got carbon, carbon solid, plus some hydrogen gas, two lots of hydrogen gas, G for gas is going to make our methane, CH4. Cool, that's the first one, and this is a gas. The next one is, it's an alcohol and it's methanol. Again, we have one carbon, so just carbon solid. We have four hydrogens, so two H2. And then we have one oxygen. How is oxygen found in nature or just in the world around us? Oxygen is not found by itself. It's found in oxygen gas. With oxygen gas is O2. We need one oxygen here though. So we're going to write half of O2. Half of O2. This is perfectly okay. And this is going to make our methanol. I can't fit methanol in there, but I'll just write this in here over there. 
So carbon solid plus two lots of H2 gas, which is four hydrogens total, and then half of an O2 molecule, which is just one oxygen atom. This is the standard enthalpy formation for these molecules. Cool. We can use this data to figure out enthalpy changes in reactions. So if we can get these notes down into our books, this top note and this note here, what this is saying is the delta H for our reaction can be calculated by summing the delta H of formation for the products minus the delta H of formation for the reactants. Again, looks complicated. We're gonna to get to we're gonna get into some examples and you're gonna see that it's actually not so complicated. It starts to get a bit simpler. So delta H products minus reactants. It's always the way in chemistry, products minus reactants. Alright, here we go. We have this equation here, which is ammonia plus some hydrochloric acid making ammonium chloride. And we can work out the enthalpy change for the reaction, this delta RH, this means the enthalpy change for the reaction, using this formation data. Okay, we do products minus reactants. What's our products? Our products is our ammonium chloride, which is here, negative 314. Products minus reactants, we add these both up, and here we go. Negative 314 minus our products, our products are minus 46 and minus 52, and that gets us a value. Our value is negative 176 kilojoules per mole. Notice it's negative, so it's exothermic. This is an exothermic reaction. We've calculated the enthalpy change based on this information. Cool. This is a slightly different one, but it's, it's using the exact same process. The only slight difference here now is we have these big numbers at the front. We have five moles of CO2, six moles of H2O, seven and a half moles of O2. Don't sweat, it's exactly the same thing. But final rule, and I should have said this before, when we look at this formation, CO2 has a formation value. The reason why CO2 has a formation value is because we can write it out. We have a carbon plus O2 making CO2. This is, this is an enthalpy of formation value. Same with H2O. We have two hydrogen, uh, two hydrogen atoms plus an oxygen atom formation value. Notice here, we do not have a formation value for oxygen. When elements are by themselves, like solid carbon or oxygen gas or hydrogen gas, these are not going to have a formation value. So we do not see it here because they're already in its base state. Nothing can form them. So they do not have an enthalpy of formation value. They're just zero. Okay, let's get into the math here. Products minus reactants. Our products are CO2 and H2O. We've got five. Notice the five here. Five times the value for CO2. Plus, because we're summing it, summing it here. Plus six times the value for H2O. Six times the value for H2O, which is here. And we have to do this carefully on our calculators, getting the positives and the negatives correctly. And then we're minusing the reactants. The reactants here is pentan 1 ol plus some oxygen. We don't have a value for oxygen because it's already in its base state. It doesn't have a delta F value. And so we only, we're only minusing, and notice we're minusing a minus, so we're, pos we're pos actually plusing it, but we're minusing what's already here, and that's negative 295. And that gets us a value for our reaction. Again, it's negative, so it's exothermic. Some of these, um, I'm going to give you a couple of side pages to do and maybe a few questions on the Google Classroom just so I know you're understanding them. And yeah, that's our work for Monday and Tuesday. Thank you for watching.